Consider the problem on the board. What is the limit as x approaches 3? Given the function that we have, the square root of 12 minus x minus 3 over the square root of 7 minus x minus 2. How can we evaluate that limit? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem yourself. Well, we could start with direct substitution to see if that's going to work. So let's replace x with 3. So we're going to have 12 minus 3 minus 3 divided by the square root of 7 minus 3 minus 2. Now 12 minus 3 is 9. 7 minus 3 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 4 is 2. So 3 minus 3 is 0. The same is true for 2 minus 2. 0 divided by 0. We don't really know what that's going to be. We don't know if that's going to be 1, infinity, 0, undefined. So this is indeterminate. We can't do anything with this right now. So we're going to need to do something else. Now, when you want to evaluate a limit that has radicals and fractions, what you want to do is you want to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of that radical. The conjugate of the square root of 7 minus x minus 2 is going to be the square root of 7 minus x plus 2. So all you need to do is change the sign from negative to positive. You simply need to reverse it. Now, since we're multiplying the denominator of the fraction by this value, we need to do the same thing with the numerator of the fraction so that the value of the entire fraction doesn't change. That's just one of those rules of algebra that we need to follow. Now, the numerator, we're not going to do anything there. We're not going to FOIL these two expressions. So we're just going to rewrite it the way it is. Now, the stuff that's on the bottom, that's a different story. We want to FOIL it because it will simplify. The square root of 7 minus x times itself is simply just 7 minus x. The square root function will cancel. Now, the square root of 7 minus x times positive 2, that's going to cancel with negative 2 times the square root of 7 minus x. But for this example problem, I'm going to write it down so you can see it. So we're going to have these two, which will cancel. And then finally, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So that's what we have at this point. 2 minus 2 is 0, so those will disappear. So let's simplify the result. So we have the limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of 12 minus x minus 3 times the square root of 7 minus x plus 2. And then we have 7 minus x minus 4. Now 7 minus 4 is 3. So this simplifies to 3 minus x. At this point, we cannot use direct substitution. If we were to plug in 3 into this expression, we're going to get 3 minus 3, which is 0. And having a 0 in the denominator of a fraction will make the entire expression undefined. So we can't do anything right now with that. But there is something else that we can do. And we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of this radical. That was the radical that was in the beginning. So we're going to multiply the top by the square root of 12 minus x. But instead of minus 3, it's going to be plus 3. And whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom as well. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL uh, those two factors. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 3. Now the square root of 12 minus x times itself will simply be 12 minus x. And then this is going to be plus 3 square root 12 minus x. And then minus 3 square root 12 minus x. And then negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Now these terms cancel. And also we can see that 12 minus 9 is 3. So that whole expression becomes 3 minus x. 
Whoops. Let's go back. Okay, why is this acting like this? So we're going to have 3 minus x on top. Now we still have this expression. The square root of 7 minus x plus 2. On the bottom we have 3 minus x. And the square root of 12 minus x plus 3. So we could cancel those two factors. Now at this point, we could use direct substitution to get our final answer. So this is going to be the square root of 7 minus 3 plus 2 divided by the square root of 12 minus 3 plus 2. Now 7 minus 3 is 4. 12 minus 3 is 9. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 I made a mistake. This should be a 3. Somehow that 2 became a 3. I wasn't paying attention. The square root of 9 is 3. Now 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. And so this is our answer, but we need to reduce the fraction. 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 2 times 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so we're left with 2 over 3. So this is the final answer. 2 over 3 is basically 0.6 repeating. Now we can check our work by plugging in numbers into the original expression. So let me rewrite the original problem. It was the limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of 12 minus x minus 3 and then divided by the square root of 7 minus x minus 2. So this method that we're going to use to check our work is very useful. If you have a multiple choice problem or multiple choice tests and uh, you're not sure how to evaluate the limit, if you're allowed to use the calculator, plug-in numbers can always help you to evaluate the limit. So as x approaches 3, what we want to do is plug in a number that's very close to 3. So let's say that this is f of x. Let's evaluate that function at 3.1. So this is going to be the square root of 12 minus 3.1 and then minus 3 divided by the square root of 7 minus 3.1 minus 2. So go ahead and plug this in to your calculator. So I got 0 0.6643241271, which is close to 0 0.6 repeating. But just to make sure, we want to try another value. We want to make sure that it's approaching 0 0.6 repeating. So let's pick a number that is closer to 3. So a number that's closer to 3 as opposed to 3.1 would be 3.01. So go ahead and type this in. So I got point six 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 four three four nine one one five as you can see it's definitely getting close to 0.6 repeating and if you really want to be sure you can try uh, you could try this number 3.001 
So for this, I got 0.66664351588. So clearly, you can see a pattern here. So that just confirms that the answer that we have is indeed correct. So now you know how to evaluate a limit problem that has radicals in it. What you need to do is multiply the radical expression by its conjugate, simplify, and then evaluate the limit. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.